Hello and welcome to Taxes in 10, where we take a tax topic and break it down in about 10 minutes. My name is Mark Barnes, and I am the managing partner of Copper Canyon Tax and Accounting Services in Tucson, Arizona. We are a boutique firm that specializes in small business accounting and taxes. This episode is on Internal Revenue Code, Section 351. Under normal circumstances, disposing of business property is a taxable event. Transferring business property to a corporation would have the same effect. The transaction is treated as if you sold the property to the corporation in return for cash. What if you exchanged those business assets for stock? The difference between the stock value received and the tax basis in the property transferred to the corporation will result in a gain or loss. Why do we need Section 351? Imagine that sole proprietor that comes into your office and is a great candidate for a C-corporation or S-corporation election. In order to transfer the fixed assets out of the sole proprietorship and into the corporation, you have to use Section 351. Remember in your software, the line on the fixed asset screen? Did business use drop to 50% or less? When the sole proprietorship stops using the assets, they've dropped to 0% business use, and that would cause a taxable event to occur. Thankfully, Congress came to our rescue and acted Section 351. This allows for the transfer of assets from an unincorporated business to an incorporated business, either new or existing, without recognizing a gain on that transfer. No gain or loss is recognized if, one, you only receive stock in exchange for your property, and two, you are in control of the corporation immediately after the exchange. Section 368C defines control. To be in control of a corporation, you or your group of transferors must own, immediately after the exchange, at least 80% of the total combined voting power of all classes of stock entitled to vote and at least 80% of the outstanding shares of each class of non-voting stock. Here's an example. Hank Hill and Dale Gribble buy a piece of property for $100,000. Years later, they organize a corporation when the property has a fair market value of $250,000. Hank and Dale transfer the property to the corporation for all its authorized capital stock, which has a par value of $250,000. No gain is recognized by Hank, Dale, or the corporation. Section 351 does not apply in the following situations. The corporation is an investment company. The property is transferred in a bankruptcy or similar proceeding in exchange for stock used to pay creditors. The stock is received in exchange for the corporation's debt or for interest on the corporation's debt that accrued while you held the debt. What about stock in exchange for services rendered? The term property does not include services rendered or to be rendered to the issuing corporation. The value of stock received for services is income to the recipient. An example, you transfer property worth $50,000 and render services valued at $5,000 to a corporation in exchange for stock valued at $55,000. Right after the exchange, you own 85% of the outstanding stock. No gain is recognized on the exchange of property. However, you recognize ordinary income of $5,000 
as payment for services you rendered to the corporation. What if you receive stock plus money or property? If, in an otherwise non-taxable exchange, you also receive money or property other than stock, you may have to recognize a gain. You recognize gain only up to the amount of money plus the fair market value of the other property you receive. The rules for figuring the recognized gain in this situation generally follow those for a partially non-taxable like-kind exchange. See publication 544 if this situation comes up. If the property you exchange includes depreciable property, the recognized gain may have to be reported as ordinary income from depreciation. No loss can be recognized. What if the corporation assumes debt? If the corporation assumes your liabilities, the exchange is generally not treated as if you received money or other property. There are two exceptions to this treatment. If the liabilities the corporation assumes are more than your adjusted basis in the property you transfer, gain is recognized up to the difference. However, if the liabilities assumed give rise to a deduction when paid, such as a trade account payable or interest, no gain is recognized. Or, if there is no good reason for the corporation to assume your liabilities, or if your main purpose in the exchange is to avoid federal income tax, the assumption is treated as if you received money in the amount of the liabilities. Here's another example. Hank Hill and Dale Gribble buy that same piece of property for $100,000, and years later, they organize the same corporation when the property has a fair market value of $250,000. Hank and Dale transfer the property to the corporation in exchange for 75% of the issued stock. Their friend Bill controls the other 25%. Since Hank and Dale only control 75% of the corporation as a group, this is not a qualifying transaction under Section 351. Their basis is $100,000, and they received property in exchange worth $250,000 so Hank and Dale will recognize a taxable gain of $150,000 total on this transaction. How will the IRS know it's a tax-free exchange? You will need to attach a statement to the tax returns. Both the corporation and any person involved in the non-taxable exchange of property for stock must attach a statement of all the facts of the exchange to their income tax return. Here's a sample statement. Header contains the name of the new or existing corporation and their EIN. Next is the statement about the treasury regulation you are complying with. The next line gets into the meat of the statement. During the tax year, ended on 1231 of the current year, Mark Barnes Incorporated transferred stock to Ricky Bobby in a transaction described in Internal Revenue Code 351. Bullet 1 describes the property transferred. A few years ago, we had a 351 transfer that was four or five pages long, over a hundred assets. Remember, more detail is better, and keep a copy in your client's permanent file. In 2019, we had an audit of an S-Corporation, and the IRS wanted proof of basis, including a copy of the original check issued to purchase the corporate stock. This guy's been in business for 30 years. Bullet 2 describes the stock received. In my basis and distributions class, I briefly covered stock authorized and stock issued. 
In this example, you could have 100,000 shares authorized, but only 1,000 have been issued. 950 shares went to Ricky Bobby, and the other 50 shares went to a 5% shareholder. Could be a friend, relative, spouse, or other third party. Bullet three describes any other money received by Ricky Bobby. Bullet four describes any other property received by Ricky Bobby. And bullet five describes any liabilities assumed from Ricky Bobby by the corporation. For more information, see Treasury Regulation 1.351-3. Make sure to hit the subscribe button to keep up to date on all of our Taxes in 10 video series and give us a like on Facebook at facebook.com slash potential CPE. If you are interested in earning continuing education on this topic, please visit potentialcpe.com for a list of all the courses we provide. Our one, two, and four hour on-demand webinars will focus approximately 75% of each hour educating theory and regulation and 25% of each hour on procedures with real life examples and walk you through completing the necessary forms to increase your potential.